let me go ahead and without further ado, introduce our two gladiators today uh, from Houston, Texas, who is currently stationed in Tampa, Florida. We have the author of Adventures of a Currency Trader. We have amateur tattoo artist and CIO of Invest Pub with 20 years of trading, Rob Booker. Hello, Rob. Happy Friday. Hey, what's happening? What am I, a tattoo artist? <laughs> amateur tattoo artist. It's fine. It's fine. True story. Yeah, true story. <laughs> All right, and uh, in the, well, I guess I was going to say blue corner and red corner, but you're both wearing blue today. So in the other blue corner, we have uh, author of Sentiment in the Forex Markets and hailing from St. Louis, Missouri, and longtime friend of Rob Booker. This is going to be, we said it's going to be a therapy session. Uh, Jamie Setley. <laughs> Do my longtime friends need therapy? It's possible. And there that it is. And What's up, Jamie? That, How are we doing? that and a watch. Uh, I'm good. and the watch. Yes. How are you? How are you? If Chris? anybody knows of a good watch uh, maker, Rob is in the market for it. He's looking for one. Yeah, well, he's uh, riding well, Cardano. All, and he's going to buy himself a watch. Rob, that's a beautiful shade of blue on you. Hey, listen, I just wanted to say, um, nice choice of colors. Yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I apparently missed the memo as the host. You guys left me out in that, but that's okay. You guys look better. Uh, Jamie, I, I do want to say that uh, I really appreciate the product placement of sentiment in, a forex, in the Forex market in your background. Oh, is my book over there? Yeah, I, I think it just <laughs> accidentally appeared. It, it was pretty magical. I didn't oh, see I, that earlier this even, morning. Yeah, you can get I a copy for like one $327 one. on Amazon. Yeah, well, that's one of 10 copies that are, uh, that are out in circulation right there, so. Mm -hmm. All right, fellas, uh, mm -hmm. I think we should get to it. We have uh, approximately 12 minutes before non-farm payroll. So I wanted to open up the discussion and see what do we think is happening today? I know we were talking a little bit uh, before the session actually started, but we've got some challenges to take off or to look at here for the trading battle. Uh, let's talk numbers. So we had ADP non-farm on Wednesday that came out a little bit softer. And now we have the non-farm numbers today. And I'm seeing forecasts of 720,000. Uh, last month was 943. Unemployment rate expected to be a little bit better at 5.2. Uh, average hourly earnings pretty much staying right there at 0.3%. Uh, Jamie, Rob, thoughts on you know price action this week? Number wise, do we think it's going to be a good hit, bad hit? Do we not care about the numbers? Just focus on price. Take me through your process. Uh, Rob, first, yeah, I just think I don't think it comes down to the jobs numbers. I think if we find out today that Joe Biden is still alive, I think the the markets might have a pretty good day. He would be a great president right. if he were alive. That's all I have to say. Weekend at Bernie's. Weekend at Biden's. Weekend. Weekend at Joe's. <laughs> no, I, I think all these numbers are. I, I don't know. I think. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think. I think the numbers will be. I think the numbers will be weaker than expected. I, I think. Um, I think we're going to I think we're going to see some weak numbers and I think we're going to see the the market maybe react a little bit to that. Yeah, one I uh one for I do hope that uh that Joe's still alive. Um to echo Rob's to echo Rob's sentiment and two and, and yeah and Chris we were talking about this before we came on but um mm -hmm. the dollar has been a one way train since last Friday, right? Straight Definitely. down. So, yep. Um the one I'm focusing on is Aussie, actually. Okay. Um, but when you have, you know, moves pre-NFP, you know, a straight line move, um, I kind of go into the number, look for a final flush out. So, you know, I don't really care what the number is as much as what the reaction is. So looking for maybe a final spike higher in Aussie and then fade that is kind of my thought today. I guess you could play okay. Kiwi too, but Aussie's my focus as far as the levels are just a little cleaner as far as the way I look at things. So, so Jamie, let me ask you this. If um, let's say the, the news comes out and the immediate reaction is dollar strength, would you actually buy back into that? Or are you actually, do you want to be short Aussie dollar as far as your overall position? So I would not do anything in that, in that, uh, in that situation, but for okay. the sake of, of this trading battle, um, mm -hmm. I would have 7380 for Aussie as kind of a, a level to you know if the move were towards towards dollar strength and aussie came off i'd be looking at 7380 as um you know kind of the knee jerk uh fade that that spike so okay yeah okay. i'm basically looking at 7380 to 70 <clears throat> well 7450 but we're pretty much there, there so maybe yeah. even like 74 7490 
is a level that I've got for Aussie, which I don't know if we're showing our charts right now, but when we do show our charts, I'll point that out and why I am looking at those levels. Sure. 74. So, okay. okay. So Jamie, Aussie dollar, is that going to be kind of your bread and butter today? As far as if we're placing trades for the trading battle, is that the one you want to focus on? Yeah. Today? Yeah. Um, okay. Yes. It, it, mo most likely, unless, you know, I get something, unless we get some wacky, huge spike, you know, in Euro right. up into like 119.80. Um, but I'm not seeing that. So, okay. You know, yeah. Aussies where my, Aussies where my head's at. So I know we're getting asked like, who's trading, who's trading. Um, do you guys want to get trades in prior to non-farm or would you rather wait for a couple minutes, like see the news, see the reaction, follow some price action. Let's get some trades. Oh, I, I'll, I, I'll wait. Um, you'll wait. Okay. Yeah. That was easy. And, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. I'll wait. As a general rule, like what I actually, what I tend to do um, and, you know, my trading is a little more swing uh, in nature, you know, levels and then and then setups off the levels. Um, but I usually don't trade, actually. Usually I wait for the hour to close. Now, in this mm -hmm. session, because, of, you know, with the, the format here, I might wait like five minutes and we'll see what's going on. Um, okay. You know, kind of let the dust settle. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, if I'm going to trade, I'm going to scream it out. I'm going to yell. <laughs> Sure. I might turn right. around and trade pound cat in the opposite direction. Rob, you trade a lot of pound, you trade a lot of uh, non-dollar crosses. I don't trade forex at all anymore. Really? Just, yeah, I trade uh, um, low float, high volume stocks um, at the open. Okay. Yeah, I haven't traded. This is the first currency trade I've taken in probably eighteen months. Yeah. I'm going to get so rich trading Cardano. I'm going to be able to buy a watch. Oh, thank God. You want to see the watch I'm going to get? get you want to yeah, see the watch look. I'm going to get? What are we getting? Rob, your trade is killing it, by the way. 73.15 looking good. 73.10. I'll set that chart alarm. Oh, that's the one. Gold that's iced the... out. I love it. Actually, I'm just going to buy this now. Let's just buy this now. And then this is really the one I wanted. I actually was going through a divorce last year, and I did not buy this watch. Um I decided during the divorce it would be better to buy a Porsche, so I did that instead. But um, this is the one I want. I want to buy a Rolex from the year I was born. Are you saying that because that's what I'm wearing? Are you fucking wearing a, a Rolex? Bob's right watches? Yeah, Bob's watches is awesome. Sweet. Nice. That is such a sweet watch, man. It's the, wait, how can I get, where's the, oh, here we go. If I could get some of that sentiment in the Forex here. market money, I would be. Yeah, he's got that, he's got that book money, Rob. Yeah, it's but I'm only up five. I'm only up five pips right now. They offered to double my advance for my book if I didn't write it. Just, just get rid their hands of you. Yeah, it's like I. The last time I interviewed for a job, I said I'm going to get hired here, and then I'm going to cost you a bunch of money. So why don't you guys just give me five hundred thousand dollars, and then I just won't come to work. I would like to open up the uh, the floor for you to talk about what you got going. What's your what's your latest and greatest projects, uh, Jamie? If a, a new book in the line, I know that uh, trader, yeah. traders can find you at, uh, Scandinavian Markets. Rob, I know you got a course, uh, the Night Trader. So I'd like you guys to talk about that and tell everybody what you're up to. What? So Jamie, what are you writing? What's this book going on? I am not writing any books. No <laughs> books. No books, Rob. Nope. I'm still so I still uh, you know I still put out trade ideas at SB Trade Desk. And um, then I, I'm chief uh, technical strategist at Scandinavian Capital Markets, which is ScandinavianMarkets.com. So uh, we've got a lot of interesting things going on over there. So check it out at ScandinavianMarkets.com. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go there right now. Well, it's in Stockholm. They're in Sweden. So. He's booking. He's booking his flight. I can tell. Yeah. He's yeah, got I'm that fully vaccinated. Eye. I do three things right now. One, I'm the publisher of a financial publishing unit um, at Financial Media Corp. So I run Invest Pub, which includes me and, and several other people that write newsletters. Uh, I publish something called The Hot Sheet every day, which is a list of stocks that I'm going to trade as soon as the market opens. That seems to be doing reasonably great. And then uh, next week or the week after, I'm launching um, something that I refer to as the Crypto Night Trader. I put a crypto trade on at night and let that run overnight um that's been that's been working pretty well for me actually so um we're gonna launch that and then send those out on a nightly basis or whatever i've, I've really become a a, a super short-term trader i'm no longer 
interested in holding positions for a significant length of time right now. I just feel like things are just a little bit too shaky for me. So I'm, I'm usually in and out of everything um, in the same day. So I've really become a day trader in the last, especially in the last couple of months.